Hello, my name is Josh Datko, and uh, with Sparkfun Electronics, we made the Crypto Shield, which I want to talk to you about today, um, to go over, uh, walk you through some of the ICs, some example projects of where you want to use it. Uh, but first, I kind of want to tell the story about you know, what, why I got interested in this, why you would want to use this product. And it started with uh, the Crypto Cape, which Sparkfun has been selling for about a year. Crypto Cape was meant for the BeagleBone. It's a security daughterboard for the BeagleBone. It has very specific security ICs on them. For example, in this, uh, for this Crypto Cape, I gave a conference, I spoke at a conference called DEF CON, where I showed how to take this cape, attach a video adapter, and then simulate building a hardware implant that a certain three-letter agency may be interested in doing, and how I would take the BeagleBone uh, with the Crypto Cape, attach it to a video port, essentially attack that computer, uh, and then I had a um, modem attached so I could then text the BeagleBone hardware implant and then have it execute commands on the computer. So those are the kind of projects that I like to do uh, with the CryptoCape and with the CryptoShield. So the problem I had with the CryptoShield was I kept flywiring everything over onto the Cape because the Arduino R3 form factor is just so much more popular. The ICs on the Crypto Shield are the same on the Crypto Cape. You have essentially the Atmel Crypto Authentication Line, which will help in different authentication in different ways. There is the uh, ATAS-132, which is an encrypted EEPROM. Um, Atmel has AVR code that works with Atmel Studio that's available for free. Then there is the ATSHA-204. That is a hash-based message authentication code or HMAC uh, authentication chip. Um, it's really easy to use. There is Atmel again has code in AVR Studio. I've written a Linux driver for it, and there is an Arduino library in, in, prog in a work in progress for that. Then there's the Atmel AT ECC 108. So this is one of my favorite chips, and it's one of my favorite because it does asymmetric cryptography, and it uses elliptical curves. So what you can do with that is you can sign messages with a private key that's stored in the chip, send that uh, message to something else, whether it's the BeagleBone, some other server, remote server, another Arduino, and then that chip can verify the signature to verify that that message came from that exact chip. The TPM, which is a trusted platform module, is also on the Shield, which is the same on the Cape. This one is the same TPM you may have in your computer, whether you have like a Dell or HP computer, it may have a TPM in it. This is the embedded version. So it does all sorts of things like the um, secure boot, trusted boot. It is a lot easier to use under Linux than uh, AVR. Uh, so I've linked in the hookup guide all the resources you would need to use this under Linux. Also have the same real-time clock. And so what we did with the real-time clock in this version is we added this little button. So this is kind of a cool, it may just seem like a button, but it's kind of a cool thing, I think. So the real-time clock will do hardware debouncing. So if we attach the button to the uh, hardware debounce pin. When you press the button, the real-time clock is looking for that low signal and then will hold that signal low for I think 250 milliseconds. So if you're trying to design like a reset circuit or something where you don't want a lot of debounce, and then you'd have to do in software, you have the button here on this real-time clock. We've broken it out to a pad. You can just use that, um, and you get the hardware debounce button for free from the real-time clock. And lastly, the new feature on the shield uh, that wasn't on the cape uh, is this RFID socket. So with the RFID socket, it works with the ID12LA RFID reader, which SparkFun carries, and it'll work with the, the button. Um, it works with the, the capsule and the tag, and it's broken out to the serial lines of Arduino, and so the use case I had in, in mind for that was if you wanted to do some sort of authenticated um, access control system. But since RFID isn't necessarily the most secure thing, you can combine it with some of the other crypto chips to maybe take a pin, um, take your RFID tag, take a pin, hash those together, get the timestamp, sign that, and you can go crazy with it. Lastly, we've worked to make this shield work with a bunch of different platforms because the uh, form factor works on a whole different uh, ecosystem. So it'll work with Arduino on a five volt Arduino board. We have onboard level shifting to work with either five volt or 3.3 volts, but it also works under Linux. So here is a SAM A5D3 uh, explained, uh, which Sparkfun doesn't carry, but it's available from Atmel. You have the Linux thing, so this will run Debian. Um, you can use all the Linux software that I wrote to use these chips um, in a Linux environment. So uh, there's a bunch of other boards in the hookup guide listed for both Linux, that's a, that have the Arduino form factor with Linux, and so you can uh, use those and play with those. So that, um, in a nutshell, is the Crypto Shield. Hope you like it, and I hope you have fun investigating some embedded security.